world where there was harmony and beauty, a utopia where a person could make the best of their lives because nobody would be repressing them, and they would go out and 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 and, and it was in the, in the period of enlightenment. This philosophy uh, uh, came from uh, Rousseau, a French mm-hmm. philosopher, Jean Jacques mm-hmm. Rousseau, and 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 then everybody says, "Wow, that was such a beautiful vision." Where did Rousseau? find that vision and here's the fun part Rousseau's philosophy of enlightenment was built on the Native American culture oh really I did not absolutely As it, he, he talked about what was called the noble savage and he was oh. talking about these these people who lived the fullest of lives on the land in the garden and, and it was so inspiring that oh. it sent the Europeans to go to the United States, create uh, a United States based on the Indian principles because there was already a United States when the white people got here, but it was uh, the Iroquois nation. It was about six different Indian tribes who had for 500 years created uh, a, a nation of states where each tribe was a state and how they lived in harmony for that 500 years so the white people got there to emulate them. But mm-hmm. the, we built a constitution on the principles of the Indian nation, and then we killed the Indians. So yeah. the dream went yeah, bad. We slaughtered the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and we killed everything because we brought European sensibilities right. into a more pure world uh, of the Native Americans. Well, that's the old story, isn't it? The Mayans, the Incas, the... Uh... Uh, who knows how many uh, indigenous cultures have been almost wiped out from the uh, desire to acquire what they have? Exactly, uh, and then you know, and then take that, drive it using that Western white uh, European uh. mentality of it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's rightfully mine because I stole it from you, and that's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ownership is nine tenths of the law, and who and the one who dies with the most toys, etc. There and there, you've just uh, defined uh, uh, the, the world that we're living in right now. And it's a horror show. <laughs> and, and it's going extinct, and yet it says, but there, we are doing this, nature is pushing this, and most yeah, importantly yeah. For, for young people, uh, which I call the young people because now I'm old, but it starts with the alphabet generation, generation X, Y, Z, whatever. Oh, and then, right. Right. <laughs> uh, the, these generations have always had a problem uh, because they find they can't get into the structure very easily. They go to college, they do all the right things, there's no jobs, there's yeah, four or yeah. five of them sharing a, an apartment, uh, trying yeah. to get by. And, and they're very, very upset psychologically because of their being not able to get into the system. And yet they don't realize they play one of the most important roles in the evolution that's happening right now for a very simple reason. You can't change the structure if everybody is holding on to the structure. Right. And yet, now we have this massive population, or probably half the population, that is not part of the structure. And the relevance is that allows for the structure to crash uh, and the creation of something new. So there's a lot of interesting responsibility and power for these young people who presently find themselves disempowered and seemingly disenfranchised. It's like, well, you get, don't blink your eyes because it's going to be such a radical turnaround coming right right now. I mean, it, it does feel that way, and, and as we head closer to 2010, it seems that uh, everything is accelerating like on a merry-go-round, and, and uh, if you're not careful, you'll get thrown off if you're at the edges. Yeah, it's it's time for being aware. It's time for starting to be more conscious because here's the interesting thing about the evolution. It's not the evolution of the human being. The human body is has already evolved. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. The evolution that's in front of us is the community of human beings. It's called oh, humanity, yeah. and, and we're repeating a, a, an evolutionary pattern uh, where individual units assemble into more complex units, which then yeah. become an individual unit and assemble with other more complex units. So, the human beings are now totally recognizing that the evolution that's in front of us is to realize that each human is a cell in the body mm-hmm. of something called humanity. It's mm-hmm. our coming together and forming that, that humanity that is our opportunity because look at it this way. 
50 trillion individual cells came together to form a community called the human body. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now the human body is the single entity, but the next level of evolution is to take the new single entities, each human, and mm -hmm. make them part of a giant super organism, and that's what biologists describe it as, called humanity. So our evolution is not individual. Our evolution is a collective evolution. And, and if what we look at as the evolving thing called humanity, which is by definition an animal because we're not plants, so this large super organism animal is trying to evolve, but guess what's happening at this moment? It, like most people that are sick on this planet, is suffering from autoimmune disease. Oh, yeah. Autoimmune disease is self-destruction where the cells tear apart each other. And it's like, yes, and civilization at this moment is facing autoimmune disease because we are killing each other rather than supporting the whole life community of humans as one body. We're, we're like one nation, which represents like an organ attacking another organ. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's like uh, uh, the liver cells <laughs> going into the pancreas and try to capture the Isles of Langerhan. Uh, and, and so basically, our world is is a, a world that hasn't recognized, but is learning to recognize the unity of human life. And when we acquire that, and then we work as a community, then the kinds of consequences that you can see in a human body where community of 50 trillion citizens is working in harmony. Think about it this way. When a human body is blissed out, 50 trillion individual sentient cells are each blissed out. So it says, my God... 50 trillion cells can be blissed out, and here we can't get 7 billion people, you know, to, to stop killing each other. We have, this is the transition that we are, are going to be experiencing if we succeed. Yeah, uh, that makes so much sense to me. And do you, do you feel that, that, that part of that evolutionary process includes the Earth as well, that some kind of um, interconnection with, uh, well, with all the cosmos around us? Absolutely, because quantum physics tells us of the entanglement of everything, number one. Mm -hmm. Astrology, uh, which, uh, you know, the government would love to say that's a bunch of, you know, woo-woo craziness. Oh, yeah. Of course, every, every leader of every country has a personal astrologer, and always, they've <laughs> always been that way. Uh, right. Astrology works very well to see masses, what happens in masses of people. Uh, and, and the significance is yes, because we evolved in this, these energy fields that come from the sun, and the, the energy, like the sun is a broadcasting device, okay? So we can put up radio telescopes and hear the sound of the sun coming to us, right? Well, the cells hear the same thing. So basically, so we're getting our information from the sun, and the planets are, are like magnets, that, that mm -hmm. change the focus, and as they change the focus, the information changes. So this is where our biology is responding to the fluctuations in these fields. So there's a big thing about astrology, and you want to then know, well, then the big astrology is 2012. Mm -hmm. that, that's the super overall overriding astrology because the most astrology we talk about is just within our own solar system, you know, with the, with the conventional planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Earth, etc. Uh, and, and yet, the solar system is part of a larger complex called the, the Milky Way, a galaxy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as much as a planet is affected within a solar system, a solar system is affected by all the other galaxies in the solar system. And, and so 2012 is a point where the, the solar system that we're in has been traveling below the equator of the mm -hmm. Milky Way, which is like a flat disk. And 2012, we're at the level of the equator, and after 2012, we move above. Well, that's like going from a north pole to a south pole uh, in a magnet, and that changes the polarity. So we're in a state of flux. And uh, just for possibility, just for see what happens, uh, the end of July um, might be the precipitating chaos that will kick the whole mm -hmm. thing. It's a possibility because at the end of July, there's a major astrological alignment uh, with... Uh, There's a grand uh, cross, isn't there? It's a grand cross, and they're in perfect, uh, you know, 90 degree, 180 degree uh, uh, oppositions, and, and, and 
this produces some very. Uh, I read one astrologer, which uh, really just said, "Look, everyone is going to be affected by this. Everyone mm. is going to be affected by this." So wow. it's an interesting thing, and you can see if you follow the news how the intensity is building up. Now, whether it will manifest or not, hey, it's all based on probability. So. Right. We don't know. And, but and I, another thing is the solar cycle is supposed to reach its maximum in 2012. So we have that uh, to look forward to, too, although it's been awfully quiet. <laughs> well, quiet before the storm, perhaps. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and why? So it's like it says, okay, it's not just humans. Gaia. Right, right. As a living organism, the planet is going through an evolutionary shake-up right now. Yep, and it's uh, about time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, we affect the, the planet, and, and it's re really wonderful because uh, things like the Global Coherence Project uh, recognize that when a population starts to focus on something like uh, like 911 or the death of, uh, uh, of Princess Diana, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Obama's election, that when the population starts to focus on a big event, it changes the readout of these uh, special devices called random number generators. Right, uh, right. And, and they start creating patterns in the numbers when the, the, the machine is designed to only make random numbers and somehow humans, when they get coherent in following a point or a story or what's going on, actually change the readout of, of these, these things which are actually part of the quantum field. So it basically mm -hmm. says... When we get enough people coherent, <laughs> we can then create a different reality than the field that is behind us. That we can change the field. And so, and that's what a kind of thing that humanity can do. Humanity as a collective group sharing some very sustainable beliefs uh, and patterns like the cells in the human body. Yeah. When working in that collective harmony can then manifest a different reality. Wow. Well, that seems like a great place to segue off into the end of the into the uh, the next reality. Um, <laughs> we're just about out of time. Um, <laughs> is there anything important that you'd like to share with the listeners? And also, uh, would you mention your website again yeah, so that absolutely. everybody can? Thank you, Lance. Um, sure. Just, uh, just leave it like this. The evolution that's in front of us is not an evolution that will occur by sitting in an armchair and waiting for something to happen. Because this is the unique evolution where we as cells are participants in the process. So everyone is going to have to participate. Uh, so it really says that we're moving into a new world, but it's going to take us to do it. And, and mm -hmm. so it's very exciting because we are, in, in, in a real sense, manifesting a new reality by our collective abilities and I see that as a wonderful thing because I think the average human in this world I think they all want about the same thing so I think uh, that same thing being just some peace and harmony and uh, and some food and, and to, to wake up and enjoy the planet that mm -hmm. collective belief can manifest a reality that expresses that wonderful and a little love <laughs> yeah, the love part of it that, that's what holds all the cells together <laughs> wonderful well we could use more of that of course <laughs> uh, my uh, website Lance is uh, yeah. brucelipton.com it's very simple wonderful. Bruce brucelipton.com Bruce you have been just uh, amazing tonight I wish I had another two hours to talk <laughs> to you you're just amazing you know, it's uh, just fun you. stuff <laughs> oh, it is. You're going to have to come back and talk again. <laughs> I like that idea, Lance. So, uh, and and it's right. fun stuff. And we'll see what will happen between this yes, time and the yeah. next time. We're we'll going to give an evolution, uh, evolution update. And get coherent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so Don't much. Get the latest book. Get coherent. <laughs> I mean, do get the latest book. <laughs> oh, the, that's, an <laughs> one, <yeah. laughs> that's an interesting All one. Yeah. That's an interesting one. All right. Thanks again, Bruce. Thanks, Lance. All right. Good night, everybody, and stay tuned for Jim Gilliland. He's always got an exciting show for us, and uh, get coherent. Good night, everybody.